Thank you for coming. Uh, welcome to the lecture. The topic of, of my lecture is um, Christian apologetics. Uh, and what I'm going to pre be presenting to you is basically an argument out of a chapter of a book that I wrote called The Glory of Kings, A Philosophical Defense of Christianity. Uh, I got the, the title of the book from this proverb, which is one of my favorite proverbs, uh, which reads, it is the glory of God to conceal a matter, to search out a matter is the glory of kings. And this, what I love about this proverb is, it seems to put a, a divine sanction on the virtues of philosophy and science. And it, it also gives us some insight, I think, into the nature of uh, God and, and what he intends for us to do. So God seems to be a, a presenter of mysteries to us. And he intends for us, as part of our uh, purpose in existence, to use our faculties, which he's given us, to unravel these mysteries. So I thought that would be a, a fitting title for a book of philosophy. Now, the, the book itself, um, I wrote it in the style of a, a medieval dream vision. So the style of what you're going to get here today is significantly different from the style that the book was written in. The book's got centaurs and grail knights and castles and stuff like that. So that won't be appearing, unfortunately, today uh, in the lecture. But I will give you the argument that I think is most useful and which is central to uh, the book. Uh, the idea begins with this intuitive assumption. right? So this is the starting point, this intuitive assumption, that every change occurs because at least one thing with the power to make it occur does so. That's our starting point. That's the assumption. And I'm going to move from that assumption to this conclusion that every force ultimately governing the universe must be angelic or divine, and monotheism's eternal mind will always be the best explanation for the existence of the universe as a whole, including that of the angels themselves. So that's where I'm going. And when I say the eternal mind of monotheism, I'm, I'm thinking of a, just a generic concept of, of monotheism, an eternal mind which has these qualities, omniscience, omnipotence, and omnibenevolence, or it's, it's all good. So since the, the um, intuitive assumption is the starting point, let's just you know, make sure we all believe it. Uh, I do not think that this is a very difficult claim to defend. But So here it is again. Every change occurs because at least one thing with the power to make it occur does so. So the question is, do you believe that? Now, the reason I believe that uh, is because it is constantly verified by experience. This is the part of the stated purpose of science, and it's confirmed by science, by formal science and by informal science that we all carry on in our daily lives. So it's constantly verified. I think it's our default assumption about reality. I think that we begin life assuming that this is true about reality, and so it's, it's where we begin, and it's impossible to disprove. Right? And then I'll tell you why in a minute, but the fact that it's impossible to disprove means our starting point is belief in it, and there's no way to shift the burden of proof. So, now the reason it's impossible to disprove this is because every attempt to do so will buy, wind up being what we call an argument from ignorance. I don't know if you're familiar with this, but this is a classical fallacy of informal logic. Uh, and it, in this particular case, it looks like this. We start with this premise. I don't know the cause of change X, and then we wind up here at this conclusion. Therefore, change X has no cause, right? This, this is never justified. This is never a, a, a justified conclusion to come to. If it's not immediately apparent how imprudent this kind of conclusion is, you could apply it to things that we once didn't know the cause of. So we, there was a point where we didn't know what caused the tides. We could have said, huh, you know what? I don't know what causes the tides, therefore nothing causes the tides. You know, I mean, there, there's, that will never be a justified conclusion to come to. So the assumption to me seems uh, pretty safe to begin with. 